Hey, what's up YouTube? Will Owen here with JetBoatPilot.com. Today we're going to talk about a subject that gets brought up quite often in social land, uh, and that is how do you clamp off your water pickups for your cooling water on a jet boat if you're being towed? Let's say you have an engine that's gone down, you had to call sea tow, or maybe somebody's towing you in. Um, these engines require cooling water, and that water is picked up from the jet pump under normal operation. So if you can imagine to get cooling water into your engine, the impeller is turning, it's pressurizing water in the pump, and that water is sent up partially up through some ducting tubing into your engine, into your exhaust to give you cooling water. Now, it's important to note that if your engine is down and you're being towed at speeds in excess of five miles an hour, like on the sea or 10 miles an hour on the Yamaha, uh, your engine is going to have issues if you have not blocked off the cooling water pickup from the jet pump. You do not want to tow any faster than five miles an hour if you've not clamped off this line. We're going to show you in this video how to clamp off the line on the Sea-Doo, uh, as well as on the Yamaha, both a supercharged as well as a naturally aspirated version. Let's jump into it. So depending on if you have a single engine boat or a twin engine boat, it's going to require either one or two or even three pairs of vice grip pliers that you keep on the boat at all times. If you want to prepare for this type of situation, uh, and maybe the tow vessel doesn't have uh, vice grips, it's important to go ahead and have these on the boat, just keep them on the boat. Uh, for us today, because we're showing three different types of configurations, I've got three different sets of vice grip pliers. For a single engine boat, you really only need just the one set of vice grip pliers. For a twin engine boat, let's say you had two engines go down, on let's say a naturally aspirated boat, you would need two sets of vice grip pliers, one for the port motor, one for the starboard motor. On this boat, supercharged engine, I have access to, on one side, I can get to the pickup and I can clamp off kind of close to the jet pump and just one set of vice grip pliers takes out that whole engine's cooling system. However, on one side, port side, it's really difficult to get into that pickup near the jet pump. So you got to do it inside the boat and it gets split in two different directions. So you need two sets of pliers on a supercharged model and this particular situation on the 255 FSH. There are others that are probably gonna require the same thing. I've seen it on 275s or similar situation for the starboard motor. Whatever the case, your boat, you're gonna need vice grip pliers, at least one pair, maybe two or three. Message us below, ask us specifics. Well, I'll respond back to you, let you know what you need. A good needle nose pair like this here is best. And a good long set like this here, this is kind of your standard length, I'd say probably seven or eight inches long. The smaller ones are okay for open spaces, but some of these tighter spaces, when you've got to really get down into some cracks and crevices, this longer set makes it easier to get on those hoses down inside there. All right, well, while we're here on the 255 FSH, let's go ahead and talk about supercharged engine, how to identify the hoses, where they're at in the boat, where you need to be clamping off, right? Uh, I've got some lights with me today, so I'm gonna light the area up. I've also got a handy little LED pointer, so when I'm pointing, You'll be able to see the little green dot, hopefully, on the hose so we can show you exactly what we're looking at. Uh, so first off, to get in on a 255 FSH and probably other supercharged models like this, you're going to have to access your cooling lines from back here on the mechanical access. So go ahead and pull this panel. All right, so follow my green dot here. You'll see it on top of that uh, exhaust can there. I'm going to move it over now. It's going to be situated on top of that... Uh, water pickup line. So this line right here is what we're going to be looking to clamp off coming off of the jet pump. Um, you'll notice that it runs down. Down here it runs down to a splitter. That splitter runs out to one hose for the engine and one hose for the intercooler. And then also you'll see there's a split it goes to that red line right there. That red line goes to your flush out so that you're flushing with fresh water from the garden hose. That's uh, to allow water to come in from that flush down line into that split and then down into those two hoses. Now on this boat, because of this little rubber strap here that kind of gets in the way, I'm gonna pull that strap out of the way. You have to remember to put this back on when you're done, but to give me easy access to that black hose down there, I'm gonna pull that strap out of the way. So really easy to do. Just come down, I'll press down on the strap and it comes off. Just leave it kind of lay in there for the time being. So go ahead and set your vice grips to where when they're fully clamped, you've got this span that's roughly 
I don't know, three sixteenths inch diameter or width span across. Whenever you clamp down on this hose, you don't want to destroy the hose. So I just like to leave it uh, about that span. So when I clip on it, it's uh, well secured, but doesn't hurt the line. So now you can see that hose clamp, that vice grip is actually clamping down on that line there. All right, let's check out this port side motor, port side water pickup, 255 FSH come in here and kind of go around the back side of the jet pump. You can see right here there's a white nylon splitter that, that red hose is connected to and there's a black hose just below the red hose and that black hose is what you would want to clamp down on just like we saw on the starboard side. However, you can't really get access to it from this mechanical access port without going through a lot of trouble of pulling all the screws and pulling out this mechanical access cover. It's just not practical if you're out on the water and you're just trying to clamp off this line. So coming off the end of the splitter though, you'll see there's a black line uh, going one direction and another black line going another direction. Those two hoses go inside the engine compartment connecting to the engine as well as the intercooler. Now I'm gonna show you how to clamp those off inside the engine bay. All right, inside the engine room now on the 255 FSH, I'm gonna light up the hose with this little uh, green laser pointer here. If you see right here where I got the light kind of on that hose there, follow me back to the uh, transom there, that, that wall, that hose comes through that big hole right there. There's two hoses coming through there. One of those is a steering cable and one of them is this hose that goes up for cooling water up to the supercharger. We're gonna clamp off that hose right there. That one's really easy to get to. We'll go and just clip it off. All right, now over on the uh, engine water side, I'm gonna light up real quick here with this pointer right there. Can you see that little spot where the green pointer is? That's gonna be the spot we're gonna be looking to clamp off with the second set. And now that set is also crimped off and now water cannot get into this side. Now, really important. This is the most important part of this whole process. If you don't listen to anything I'm saying, listen to this. It's possible to get this really, really badly wrong. If you take the boat, tow it home, get it fixed, go back out to the water the next time and go boating, but you forgot to take off those clamps, you're gonna burn your motor up. And so we don't wanna be responsible for giving you bad advice. We don't want you to burn your motor up. So um, in a situation where you're being towed home and you don't have any of your engines on, uh, it's best to take your lanyard, disconnect it from the um, area where you, where you plug in your lanyard and your, key, and your keys, and connect this lanyard somewhere down along inside of this area so that you cannot start your engine until you first retrieve your lanyard. And hopefully you're smart enough not to start the engine without removing the clamps. Whatever case, whatever process you wanna create for yourself to have that redundancy, it is important to create some kind of fail safe so that you do not start the engine without first removing the clamps. Now, some have actually gone through the process of installing ball valves, which is not necessary, but if you wanna do that, you can. It's a lot of extra work. You may not ever use this, but if you do, you can install a ball valve and that's fine. But once again, you have to have the same process of some kind of redundancy so you don't forget to turn those back open when it's time to go boating. Otherwise, you're robbing your boat of cooling water and that could be problems. All right, now we've done this on supercharged engine. Let's go look at a naturally aspirated engine, which will apply to most Yamaha boats. And then after the naturally aspirated version, we're also gonna move over to the CDU switch. Now, if you wanna fast forward to that portion of the video, simply just, we'll put some chapters in so you could find that and move ahead to the switch version. For 95% of Yamaha users, Yamaha boat owners, the naturally aspirated engine is what you're gonna be dealing with. And uh, I wanna show you customarily what you're gonna see. Even inside of some of your supercharged models, you may see this, I haven't compared all models, but this is what's most common. Let's jump in and clamp off the line on the starboard side, this 242X. Now what I've done is I've gone ahead and clamped ahead of time. You see the vice grip pliers, how they're clamped down on that hose coming just out of that uh, transom wall there, just behind the, the connection point. See the band clamps? by that red hose, there's that Y connector. And we've clamped just aft of that connection. Um, we tried to clamp inside of here between these two, but th there's so much plastic and, and, and components in the way, it's hard to really get a good clamp. 
All right, so now you can see both of the pickups are clamped off. We would do this in a situation where both engines were down. And uh, we also want to create for ourselves a redundancy, like we talked about on the FSH video. When I say redundancy, this is your cutoff switch um, lanyard. And what I try to do is if I'm being towed, take my lanyard and situate it back here on one of those clamps ahead of time. Or before you leave, make sure that this is situated back here so that you don't have the ability to start the engine until you remember to take those clamps off. If you try to start the engine and those are still clamped off and you go operate the boat, you can burn your motors up. Now, if you don't want to use your lanyard for this, you can find some other way to do a redundancy of sorts. That's fine. We use the lanyard because I don't want to be able to start the engine physically. I, I do not want to be able to start this engine unless I remember to go back and do this. And if someone else tries to come in and start my engine, they will not be able to start as well until they put the uh, pull the lanyard out of the engine compartment and go back up. Uh, whatever the case, find your own way, but you don't want to run these engines with the clamps in place. Obviously, once the motors uh, or the boat has been worked on, repaired, remove those clamps, uh, go back to the process of starting your engines and, and have fun on your next outing. But um, all right, good. So that is all for your uh, naturally aspirated. Now let's move over to the Sea-Doo switch. All right, so we're on the Sea-Doo switch. Uh, this is a 21 switch limited. But all these engines are going to be about the same. Uh, you've got two compartments, uh, hatch lids, in the back portion of the boat. Front one is for the engine. The back is more for the exhaust. So we're working in this back area. I've taken the lid off to set it aside. Um, bring the camera in tight. I want to show you where we're going to be working uh, to get access to this pickup line. Again, cutting off the cooling water that's going to get into this exhaust system. Can you see the green light here? I'm kind of lighting at that uh, intercooler. Uh, I'm going to take that green light and follow it all the way down to the hose that we're going to be clamping off. And hopefully you can see right there. That hose is just to the, the right hand side if you're facing you know, towards the back of the boat. Uh, it's to the port hand side of those two clear white hoses you see. That line is your main water pickup coming off the jet pump. It goes over to a T, which runs out to the intercooler and then up to the engine. We're going to clamp it off right there. And that's going to protect our exhaust system if we wanted to be towed faster than five miles an hour. Come in here with our clamp and we'll clamp it off right there. We like to create redundancies, so a preventative for us making a mistake. We don't want to operate this boat with that line clamped off. You could burn up your exhaust, right? Uh, so what we like to do is take off the lanyard. We like to situate the lanyard somewhere down near that clamp. Uh, ideally on the clamp. Uh, if you don't want to get it near hot components, I understand that. Just take this away from and make sure there's something to remind you to remove that clamp before you operate the boat again. This is easy because if you don't have this, you can't start the boat. And if this is near the clamp, then it should be a good reminder. Whatever the case, you want to make sure you have a redundancy so you don't start your engine while that clamp is in place or someone else for that matter starts the engine uh, with that in place. Well, all right, without well, a route wraps up our video on clamping off your water lines for emergency towing. Um, for more questions about this, feel free to comment below. We'd be glad to answer any questions that you might have. Maybe you've got a scarab boat or a vortex boat. They're similar uh, to the Sea-Doo switch in that they have a BRP power plant. I don't have specifics on that at the moment. We can certainly find that information for you. And if you like this video, by the way, we ask you to like and subscribe. That sure helps the channel out a lot. And if you like this video, check this one out.